Today I'm going to talk about calculating the nth root of a number, right? And we denote that as such. F to give you an example, if you want to calculate the fifth root of 33, for instance, right? Let's take a look at that. We're going to rewrite this as 5, 2 to the power of 5 plus 1. That's how we're going to rewrite it. So it's going to be very close to 2, okay, as an answer. So let's do that here too, but now in unknowns. So you get n to the power of x to the n, where x now equals 2, okay, plus some sort of delta, which is the remainder. And in this example, the delta is 1. So if you work that out a little bit more, you can take x out and you get the nth square root of 1 plus delta over x to the n. Okay. And now we're going to do a Taylor expansion on this piece here. So let's take that aside and let's define, let's see what that looks like if we do a Taylor expansion on the nth square root of 1 plus a small quantity. And this is assumed to be a small quantity. Okay, if you do that, you essentially get 1 plus df d delta evaluated at delta equals 0 times delta. And that's approximately equal to, right? If delta is small enough, this is very accurate. So if we work this out, we get that plus 1 plus delta. And we have to differentiate this. So we get 1 over n, and this is 1 over n minus 1, okay, times delta. And if you work that out, and you have to evaluate, obviously, this at delta equals 0. So if you work that out, you get 1 plus delta over n, okay? So this nth square root is nothing more than 1 plus delta over n. So if we fill that back out in here, we get x. And then we get 1 plus delta. Now delta is now this piece, so that's delta over x to the nth divided by n. Okay? So this is what we will get approximately if we approximate this square root. It's approximately this. And we can work this out a little bit more. So let's rewrite this. What we had was this. 1 plus delta nxn. Okay. And before we do that, let's take a look at what delta is. Now, delta is nothing more than a right, minus x to the power of n. That's what delta is. Look at our example, right? Delta is a is 33. And we subtract 32 to the, to the power of 5, and we're left with 1, which is exactly that, that 1 over there, and that's the delta. Okay? So if we fill this out in here, we get x1 plus a minus x to the power of n divided by x and n times x to the power of n. We can work that out a little bit more, and we get nxn minus xn plus a over nxn okay and we can work that out a little bit more of course and we can say that is n minus 1 to the power xn plus a divided by nxn minus 1 yeah and then I combined this with this that gives you n minus 1 and here I just did a subtraction I took out x to the nth and you get this okay so this is then by good approximation, the, the nth root of a. Okay, so let's do that for this example here now, because we have this. So let's try to do the fifth square root as an example of 33. Yeah. What we now have to realize that a is 33, if we fill that out here, x equals 2, because 2 to the 5th is 32, okay, and now if we fill that out, we get essentially 
32 times, and it's 5 times 4, so that's 4, plus 33, divided by 5 times 16, okay? Because it's 2 to the power of 4, n is 5, 5 times 16 gives you 80, okay? So you do 32 times 4, that's 128, plus 33, divided by 80, okay? And that is equal to 161 divided by 80. So that's 2 1 80th, right? And that is equal to 2.0125. Now the real value of this, if you throw it in the calculator, you will get 2.0123, etc., etc. So you see that it is really a very good approximation. Now there's a reason for that of course, the approximation is so good because it's very close to the 2 to the 5th which is close to a real one, uh, namely 32. The farther you go away, the bigger the error will be. So what I did is I plotted out some curves to give you a feel for how accurate this calculation is. On the left hand side we have values of A between 1 and 100. So we try all kinds of roots. Here we have the square root, here we have the cube root, here we have the fourth and here we have the fifth root. And the errors you see on the vertical axes are percentage errors. So it's essentially the approximated value minus the real value divided by the real value times 100%. Okay. So you get percentages here. So you will see for a square root, the error is no more than 0.5% in this plot. If you go a little bit lower than if you would just plot out between 0 and 10, you will see that the errors are a little bit bigger. But on average, you can see that the errors are really, really good already for square roots between 1 and 100, right? If you go higher than, say, 40 or something, the error is no more than 0.25%. For cube roots, you can see that the errors are a little bit bigger for smaller numbers over here. But when you go, say, for instance, between 60 and 80, the error is no more than a percent. Okay? The fourth roots, for smaller numbers, again, are a little bit bigger. But if you go bigger numbers, you can already see that it's only a few percent error. And the same for a fifth root. Yeah, again, the errors become a little bit bigger, especially for smaller numbers here. <clears throat> but if you go big enough, you can see that the errors become really, really small. So that's what I did here. So this checks numbers between 1 and 100. This checks numbers between 101 and 1,000. For the square roots, you can already see the numbers are really, really accurate. For cube roots, the numbers are below a percent. So that's pretty good. If you go above 100, you see that errors are below 1%. So up to two decimal places is accurate, right? The fourth and the fifth root are a little bit worse. Yeah, you can errors up, you can get errors up to four percent in here, even a little bit higher. But if you take numbers high enough, you will see that with this approximation, you can already get within a few percentage points, which is pretty good. I really like this approximation. Uh, I also think this is a great place to stop. So if you like this video, please share, please like, and please subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.